Welcome to The Stitch. I'm Lynn. And I'm Pam. We're happy you're joining us today. Yes. So this is an online quilting talk show. Um, join us as we talk about current topics uh, in the quilting world, techniques to improve your own quilting, and stories about our quilts. Hooray. So our episodes come out monthly, and they're complemented by virtual sew-ins and weekly podcasts. And exciting news, as of this month, we'll be releasing audio-only version of the video on my podcast feed. We'll give you more details in the show notes for this. So learn more at thestitchtvshow.com. Okay, so what we're going to talk about today. Oh, no, what did you do this? Well, we had Christmas. Christmas, New Year's, all the holidays. All the holidays Past happened. Events, there were many grievances aired in my house. <laughs> Seriously, you grieve, you have aired Honey, enough you've known me for years. That's I true. Have, she probably does. I have grievances. I don't know why I ask, really. No, I uh, gave some quilts away, and they were very well received. So Excellent. I know. My, my niece was like, yay! And she got a frozen quilt, so we did have to tell her that was the back, though. <laughs> Turn it over. Because <laughs> my sister was like, oh, look at these penguins. Aren't these pretty, Lily? And I was like, it's the back. Again. Again. Turn it over. Why don't you but, wrap it so front side out? Like, when you fold it to wrap it, do you fold it so... Yeah, the, the back's showing. Why do you do that? Because I want people to open it up. But then That's they're the like, whole other level of open. So you have the wrapping paper, and then you open up the quilt. But apparently oh. people need more than that. I, I always fold mine so the best part is what they see first when they open it. Well, maybe that's So they don't, may do. not see some jacked up tension on the back or maybe some weird choices. <laughs> I don't have jacked back. up tension on the back of my quilts. No, I'm talking about me. Oh, okay. Every once in a while, there's like a, whoo, girl, you know, fix well, that. <laughs> I'm not saying it's never happened. I'm just saying I don't normally have. Yeah. Well, like if there's, so I'm working on a set of quilts for new arrivals, and there's an applique letter on one of them. So I'm right. going to fold it so the letter is the first thing they see when they open it. So maybe I should do that. But Lily, of course, she's four. Um, we had to take every piece of wrapping paper off the box. So if there's a piece like, you know, two inches big, she's like making sure it gets off. And really, she was much more interested in opening everybody else's present because that's a four-year-old. <laughs> there's a so. methodical, like, tear off enough paper to get to it, look at it. Ooh, great. And then make a pile. Here's a pile of wrapping paper for the cats to frolic in. Oh, geez. And then there's a giant stuffing. Slinkies don't care. The best part of Christmas frequently in our family is taking all of the paper trash and boxes and all that to my father-in-law's house and lighting it all on fire. <laughs> <laughs> so you have an after Christmas bonfire. Oh, we do. Oh, well, it's usually like Christmas Day because we'll go over there Christmas Day. Hey, we brought the burning stuff. And there's a big barrel and we all stand around because it's usually kind of cold. Although it was unseasonably warm here. But yeah, lighting things on yeah, fire. Yeah, it was great. Great tradition. I like it warm. So <laughs> I'm not, not a cold person for all of those who live up north and like snow. No. Because yeah. snow requires you to do things to deal with it. Or and I don't want to do those things. Stay inside and quilt. Yes. Well, that's okay. Especially if you, you know, it melts by two o'clock. That'd be great. Ooh, look, the pretty snow. And it's gone. It's two. We're good. Um, that's where I am. So anyway, we should probably talk about what we're supposed to talk about on the show today. So yep. what is that? So today we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions, quilt related. Oh, it does make me nervous, but go ahead. You'll be okay. We're also going to talk about paper piecing and why you should enter quilts in quilt shows. Okay, so. All right, so. First topic. Let's roll into some New Year's resolutions. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, I was thinking about this when we when we brought this up as a topic, that, you know, you got to categorize your New Year's resolutions, right? So there's, you know, personal resolutions mm -hmm. that you would have. But, I, you know, I'm thinking, like, we're just talking quilting res resolutions. Like, everybody wants to lose weight and you know, get healthy and exercise and eat better. and Mine's always floss more. Because you can always floss more. <laughs> like, just floss at all is still flossing more. True. <laughs> that's true. I don't know that that's I'm ever that been bad. on my... See, I always believed that you should set up a New Year's resolution that you knew you were going to succeed at. Like flossing more. No, like, uh, don't drink coffee. For me, that's not hard. I don't like coffee. So I'm great at this every year. No. So one year I gave up smoking. Excellent. Yes, but I've never smoked. Yeah, me So, so I've been great. I've had that resolution for like 20 years. It's been awesome. Now, what's the worst resolution you ever made? Give up heroin. 
<laughs> I mean the one you failed at. I know you're still on heroin. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> I did tell my dad that once. He almost, I, he thought I was serious. <laughs> he was like, <gasps> I thought he, I should have told him while he was driving. That was bad on my decision yeah. on my part because he did almost drive off the highway. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so um, I think you should give up, you know, things that you know you're going to succeed at. So it's hard with quilting, like, because I don't know what I'm going to succeed at quilting. But here's what I was thinking. Okay, so I need a resolution for how many Charity quilts or items I want to get done. Charity mug rugs. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that charity block I cut out. No. <laughs> because we have, you know, we belong to a few guilds, and we all do stuff for charity in the guilds, and we have a big charity donation thing. So I think now, if I set up this resolution by October, you know, maybe I'll get some stuff done, and yeah. I'll have a number. So I was thinking... I hate to say this because now it's going to be on the air. Do it. I was thinking two quilts. Two quilts. Two quilts. Because this so pales in comparison to what Pam does. Seriously. She is I'm really good at this. pretty awesome. Yeah, you are. In and general. I was thinking two quilts <laughs> and like five pillowcases and five placemats. Because our uh, one of the guilds we belong to, we do pillowcases for the Conquer Cancer people, which I think they've changed the name now. I think it's Ryan's Case for Smiles. Oh, okay. It's the new name. It's the new name, but pillowcases. And then we also do uh, placemats for the Meals on Wheels in the local area. Mm -hmm. So when they take a meal to a uh, a person who needs it, they have a place, a nice place bed that goes with it. Yeah. And so they, I thought five of those, five of the pillowcases, and two quilts. And that just seems like a lot. Girl. I know. How many did you do last year? Uh, I lost count. See, I had yeah. at least six She wins every year mats. the drawing. I don't remember pillowcases. I want to say around 10 pillowcases. And quilts, I think I was up to double digits. I think it was... 12-ish, because I donated some through the year and then turned in a bunch at the October meeting. Right. Where they'd collect a lot yeah. of them. So they do a drawing. So she doesn't go to the day meeting and they do a drawing. She sends me to pick up her gift certificate every year. She has to fill out like 50 <laughs> raffle tickets Yes, for I do. It's bad. <laughs> so I feel like I've done them, but I really haven't. So I was thinking two quilts and five of each of those, and then that... I thought that was a good resolution. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, but then I think you have to consider other things for New Year's with quilting. Like, not only charity stuff, but, or, um, and personal, like how many quilts are you going to get done personally, but also UFOs. How many UFOs do you have? Oh, dear Lord. I mean, so I do Seriously. have quilts ready and waiting to be quilted, but it's not that they've been stored for months or anything. Like, I'm just waiting on long arm time. I know. But, He's but it's, just okay. Gonna, it's okay. I got a list. <laughs> <laughs> but I have one that's been hanging in my powder room for three years. <laughs> What's making you not do it? Because I don't want to mess it up. So, what are you saying? Your skill set? You don't feel like your skill set is. Oh, no, I could totally lip. rock it. Then, but I don't want, I'm, I'm scared of messing up the quilting, so I have stalled on pinning down the applique and no. attaching that. So I'm like, what? If I'm going to get stuck at the quilting, why should I? So I don't know. Ah, uh, it's just one of those. It's just one of those. And I, I do have it on my list of, I have like three things that I was going to focus on this year. Okay. Because there's a podcast called Quilting for the Rest of Us, a woman named Sandy produces that and she hosts quilty resolutions every year right. and so you pick three things to focus on and then one word to guide you for the year so my three okay. things was my one ufo <laughs> which I honestly, have so many ufos i can't even tell you it's been on the list for the last two uh, years it's sad. <laughs> uh and then work on pattern production and writing which well that was on my that's on my theme. list this the stitch are, are things that yeah. we want to get done, which probably should be first. And then the third thing I don't remember, which is perfect because my word of the year was focus. So I've already <laughs> forgotten <laughs> so that's not what good. my third thing was. I'm sure it was <laughs> highly important. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. So I have three things and I can only remember two. So, yeah. so the third one is refer back to the first one. Uh, yeah, I uh, will make it, maybe my third one is go double check the spreadsheet that she tracks it all on oh, to see what that third yes. thing was. I knew you had a spreadsheet. No, no, so do, when you have New Year's resolutions, do you consider the unknown? I mean, like, because you know sometime during the year somebody's going to show up in your life that 
and say, oh, I'm pregnant. And you're like, oh, I need to make them a baby quilt. Yeah, but that's like small potatoes to work out a baby quilt. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like you small. Just, yeah, that's true. They don't need a king size quilt. They're small. That's true. I just spend too much time thinking about it, I guess. All right. I have too many UFOs, so I don't even know. And I think one of our guilds is going to have a UFO. Yeah, I think she's in charge of it, too. So it's got me concerned <laughs> that I'm going to have to commit to UFOs. And now I've all committed to the charity stuff, which another friend's in charge of that. So I feel like I need to do that, too. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and um, because I'm in charge of the show... We've got a small treasures thing, so I know I need to do some stuff that would be donated to the small treasures. Yeah, that can be stretched into 2017, though, because That's the true. collection for those won't be till next year. That's true, but they're already on my brain, I guess. The show's on my brain. Maybe some of your UFOs could fit for that. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Some of the UFOs, I'm like, I don't even know if I want to, I don't know, it's yard sale, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. So we'll see. So New Year's resolutions, do you have any? Let us know if you do. And do you um, tell us what they are? Are there? I'm sure they're better than ours. Floss more. Floss Everyone more. Everyone should floss <laughs> more. <laughs> Give up. I gave up Cokes, too, to say no. She's dead to me. I don't drink Coke. <laughs> I hope you all enjoy this episode. It's going to be our last. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very successful at that, too, because I don't drink Coke. I drink water and tea. That's my favorite. I am awesome favorite. at not doing heroin. That, see, that's how we're good at that. See, I'm awesome at that, too. All right, so what we're going to talk about next, um, we need to give you a quick tip from our sponsor, and we'll talk about uh, paper, piecing. paper piecing when we come back. So, paper piecing. Not English paper piecing. Oh, good, because I don't like English paper piecing But at legit all. foundation paper piecing, okay. which relates to the quilt behind us. This was a 2015 quilt along. Which she complained about, by the way. I did. It was 30 <laughs> weeks of my life. Yeah, and so I, I drive with her to these to meetings and stuff. She'd be like, I'm not getting anything done. I'm like, you're doing a really complicated quilt. I know. You did. Well, so the designer is uh, Jen Olfenstein from fandominstitches.com. Definitely check it out. She runs Oh, I love that. Quilt yeah, that's a neat site. Yeah. And it's great because it fandom kind of encompasses a whole range of genres. So there's fantasy, sci-fi, superhero, animation. animation. Yeah. So there's Disney princess p- blocks. There's... There's literature. Are, yeah. There's, yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Yeah, so this was a Harry Potter bookshelf quilt. I love bookshelf quilts. Mine is named Hogwarts Required Reading because it represents a lot of the items from the books and the movies from Harry Potter. But it was um, a block a week for 30 weeks. So there's 30 paper piece blocks and then I've got some extras around the outside that you guys can't see in this shot, but we'll link to the full photos of the quilt. Um, But I finished mine over Christmas break because I I finished piecing the top around September and then was like, whoo, I need a break. (laughs) So I sat on it until Mm -hmm. Christmas time and finished quilting it because I knew it was going to be custom quilted. But paper piecing, you know, I learned how to do it years ago and I right. like it for the precision, but it is aggravating because... I wondered I, if you said you were going to like it or not. I do. I enjoy it, but in small <clears throat> doses and I call it the Ginger Rogers of quilting because you have to do everything you do in quilting, but backwards and in high heels. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because Ginger Roger did every yes. step with Fred Astaire, but backwards and in high heels. Yes. yes. So, so what I find... I wondered why you said that. <laughs> well, I have it on my notes, Ginger okay. Rogers. I was like, I'm gonna get it backwards and in heels. Okay, because yeah. you have to. You're you're sewing on the paper side of right. things, and this is all going to sound very mysterious and complicated. But Jen, who runs Phantom and Stitches, has a good tutorial, and we'll link to that in our show notes over on the the website, so you guys can see what we're talking about. But it's essentially you have a piece of paper, or sometimes you can print it out on fabric or muslin foundation. Yeah, a foundation. And you are stitching your fabric to that foundation. Now, if it's a fabric foundation, you leave it in the quilt. If it's paper foundation, you get to spend many, many hours picking out little pieces of paper. Right. (laughs) From the back of your quilt so it doesn't crinkle when you use it. Yeah. Oh, and I think that's one of the drawbacks of it is that it's an extra step. Um, It does really have beautiful results. I think one of the other things about it is that you have to take out all that stupid paper. No, I mean, it is very cathartic if you, like me, like to 
picket things <laughs> and, and get perfection out of it. You're like, oh, I got all the last little bit of paper. It's very. Now, when I do paper piecing, I like this product called EQ Printables and it's foundation sheets. And you can print on the foundation sheets and then you don't have to take it out. So it's fabric. It's no, it's like a. Oh, it dissolves. It, uh, yeah, I guess it okay. dissolves. Yeah. yeah. There's so a... I don't have to take it out. And when I took a paper piecing class, it was with Renee Merrill. Mm -hmm. um, and the best trick, and you do all the backwards, you know, like she's talking about. But the best trick is she uses this foundation sheet so you don't have to take out the paper, which is nice. And the other thing is um, when she taught us, like, because we were doing spirals and mandelas kind of thing. Um she taught us how to make sure we had enough fabric for the piece that we're covering. Because mm -hmm. have you ever? Oh, girl. <laughs> See? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes and I she have. knows where I'm going. <laughs> so, have you ever tried to paper piece and you're like, oh, this piece of fabric's big enough? And you sew it on and you flip it back and it's like it didn't cover the entire area. So, Romain Merrill's technique is that you cut out all of the area. Now, she's doing spirals, so you're repeating. Mm -hmm the stuff multiple times. So you cut out the the area that you're gonna paper piece and then you cut your fabric out around that so you know that it's bigger. That didn't make sense to you. You just looked at me like, I didn't get it. This is my interested face. <laughs> so, but it was a way that you had the shape for whatever yes. that shape so was. So you're cutting out so, two. So you take that paper piece of that shape and you take it to the fabric and you cut it out around that to make sure you didn't have, that you had enough fabric. So you have your foundation and then you have you print out another set. Right, you, oh, another okay. set that on paper. That bother me because that to me is like repeating well, steps. Yes, but when I was doing a spiral, and mm -hmm. you've seen my, yeah. yeah, you had the same piece eight times. So you need to make sure that you cut out because you were trying to mimic the, the spiral. So you were using the same fabric and yeah. the same size piece eight times to do the spiral. So, or the Mandela. I guess I did a Mandela, not a spiral, but anyway. It it's like a kaleidoscope it. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, she calls it a Mandela. So anyway, but I like foundation piecing, and I have, and I think that cutting out the fabric too small has been one of the, can distract people from doing it. Because at that point, then you're just making a crazy quilt. Yeah. Because I have, when I've had the piece too small, because then you're still trimming bits off, and you use, when I do it, yes. this is like this is an add an eighth ruler, but there's an add a quarter, and so you're folding the paper back, and you're adding the quarter with the ruler, and, and then you're, you're slicing. slicing. And, and then, then if you slice the pattern. I haven't done that. Oh, well, it can happen. I don't drink when I quilt. <laughs> Kidding. Totally do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it, it can happen. It's definitely one of those I gave those a heroin, but not alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> what not to do when quilting? Heroin. Heroin's what not to do. Um, you might get a lot more quilting done. Does it make you lethargic to see? I, I have know. no idea. I have to go back to I'm my not, eighth grade Say No to Drugs yes, videos to see, be, like, oh, which one makes you lethargic yeah, and which one catches you? not in my world. I don't know. You watch those shows on TV and you go, oh, my goodness. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so, how many paper piece quilts have you done? I did uh, just a couple. One. Yeah, I think one. It's not my favorite technique. Yeah. I, and no. I think paper piecing can look really nice, but it's how well it's drawn, and the ones that I'm drawn to have 50 million <laughs> pieces in them. So, it's not something you go, ooh, I got an idea, something we can whip up real quick. Yeah, the teacher that I learned from showed uh, a quilt she had made, and it was an eagle, you know, with a mountain backdrop. It, gorgeous looking, but the eagle's eye was maybe an inch square and had, I don't know, 80 pieces in it. It was yeah. nuts. Yeah. But, I mean, it looked, that's but how you get But it looked amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's how, and that's the thing. You, you can't get those nice curves with paper piecing unless there is a ton of yeah. pieces in it. And then that's takes more time. I mean, it's a definitely a time-consuming technique, but it, it produces gorgeous results. So when you quilt paper piecing, I mean, it, honestly, it depends on how big the pieces are, but on, sometimes there are so many layers between the oh, stitching yeah. and the folding. How do you even quilt something like the Mandela with the small pieces? I did it very uh, sparsely. I, mean, I didn't do a lot of heavy... You can't do a lot of heavy custom quilting. You would break needles yeah. in some of that stuff. So, yeah, it's definitely a... Um, 
it, it's a neat technique. Oh, the other tip I would say when you're doing paper piecing is shorten your stitch length. For sure. Because yeah. otherwise, when you go to rip the paper off, um, the shorter the stitch length perforates the paper more, so it makes it right. easier to tear yep. off. Definitely shorten your stitch length. Though, and make sure your pieces are big enough. That would be my other <laughs> <Yeah>. tip. Because <laughs> I've done it the wrong way. And you learn. If you've done it the wrong way multiple times, oh, yeah. <laughs> you're like, oh, well. Let's not try that again. <laughs> For sure. That was not fun. So did you like doing this? I mean, are you pleased with it? Yeah, I got, when I talked about it on my podcast, someone asked me, did, did I regret doing this? And the answer is no, absolutely. It ate three, 30 weeks out of 52. Oh, yeah, she didn't like that part. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons I feel like I didn't get as much done quilting-wise last year yeah, as I did the year. it's a stunning quilt. Oh, yeah, I'm totally happy. I have no idea what to do with it. It's too big to hang in my living room. I'm certainly not going to let the dog slobber all over it. No. You know, so now I'm like, well, I have this thing, but I don't want to do with it. <laughs> and I love it. And ta-da! <laughs> ta-da! Look at my, my uh, masterpiece. Gonna, I have to make my kids bunk together and just set up a quilt museum room. <laughs> <laughs> that no one's allowed in. No cats, no dogs, no children. But no. but I think when you do something like this, you're like, okay, I've mastered this. I can... Because oh, yeah. you got to know your paper piecing went from good to yeah. much, much better by the end of 30 weeks. Mm, I don't know. I've looked at some of those later <laughs> blocks. I'm like, ooh, yes, someone phoned yeah, it in. <laughs> wait till you see the dragon. You can't see it on screen, but the dragon on the top no, of the shelf. one was nuts, yeah. It was pretty amazing. I think it's an amazing quilt. So, anyway. Ooh. But fun tip. Okay. So for paper piecing, I'm not saying this happened frequently in my quilt, but sometimes. <laughs> Every once in a while. When I would have a light piece next to a dark piece. Yes. Uh, and so it's like, oh, it's because my black, my background here is black. And when I had like the cat or the golden snitch or something, um, and it didn't quite line up right, I may have taken a Pigma pen in the background <gasps> color and maybe smoothed over some of those little bits so they look like they lined up, even if they didn't exactly. So that's a fun little cheat. I've done that with quilting. Oh, yeah. With, yeah. I've colored the quilting thread. If I yeah. have to take a light thread over a dark area, I will yeah. take the Pigma pen and I will and, just And color. judges don't see it, so. I know, that's the best. It's great. Yay. Pigma pens can be your friends. <laughs> For sure. Yes. All right, so... We should probably take a break. Take a little break, hear from our sponsor, and we will jump back into why you should enter quilts and shows. Yes, sounds good. Okay, so our next topic is why should you enter a quilt in a quilt show? Money and fame. <laughs> No, really? Those are your only two reasons, money and fame? Well, technically, I had the word thrill on my notes. <laughs> thrill? No, but I, okay. I I, would literally fall out of this chair if I ever won money in a quilt show. Oh, I, well, yeah. But it's a goal. I mean, well, we talk about New Year's resolutions. I mean, It's way I easier to give a, a heroine for me I wanna... than win a quilt show. <laughs> <laughs> well, that really wasn't hard. Um, but... So, so entering a quilt show, you just don't, I think you've got skills that you could do it, and we are going to enter one that Oh, we, yeah, totally. Yeah. So how many quilt shows do you enter a year? Half. <laughs> Half? <laughs> one So I year? entered last year uh -huh. two quilts in our local guild show. Um, I meant to enter this quilt in a local guild show, but I missed the postman pickup, uh, and so my entry would not have been postmarked by the correct date. So, you no. Know. You didn't enter this in the book? I, I meant to. Whoops. <laughs> I thought you did. In my okay. defense, I was busy. Okay. <laughs> I, no, I meant to. You, yeah, so. But I will enter it. There's another local show that's coming up this year. I will probably enter it in that one. Yeah. Uh, and Good. then in the big guild show that you're the chair of, yes. I will enter it. <laughs> I gotta get a quilt done for that show. So here's what, one of the reasons I enter shows is deadlines. I work better with deadlines, and I know that I'm not the only person out there that needs, like, if I have a deadline, I work to deadlines. And so quilt shows have deadlines, and then I'll work to get some. Now, that's not to say that I'm not binding the night before I have to take pictures. And and truth be told, the national show that I got in, that binding wasn't completely done. I <laughs> don't tell the big judges, but so when I took a picture... <laughs> The binding was on the front, but I hadn't, you know, stitched it down. Stitched on the back. it down on the back, and when I took the pictures, 
you couldn't tell. <laughs> I'm just saying. And it got in, but I, <laughs> it didn't win anything. <laughs> it was in the show, though. And to get in a national show, I mean, I've been in one national show. So. No, I mean, I I would encourage people deal. to enter a show not with an expectation to win. Because, no. Uh, you know. I don't. I just want to get in. I'm like, I just want people to see this is a cool thing. And often it's because, like, hey, I like this designer. I think they would benefit from some recognition. Like, I hope when this goes up, you know, right. hey, yeah. everyone, check out more, learn more about paper piecing. There's uh, one of the quilts that I had in the show from last year was a quilt along done by a woman who's now an editor of a quilt magazine. Right. And I just... I like her patterns. I thought they were good looking. And I think by having that in the show, that got her some recognition as well. Because right, you should you always the, credit yes, the pattern designer. Yes, credit the pattern designer. designer. Yes, agree. Um, but I, I think, you know, you get inspiration from so many different things, whether it is, you know, the first place quilt or whether it is a nice quilt someone made that has a great use of color. I think putting oh, your work yeah. out there to inspire others and be inspired by is really the biggest thing. Oh, I completely agree. And I think one of the best things about going to a quilt show is taking someone who's like, their concept of quilting is, you know, grandmother's flower garden and, oh, my grandmother did this. And then when they see the work that's out there, they're totally blown away. They're like, this is artwork. Mm -hmm. This is amazing stuff. And I think that that, for me, when I say I'm a quilter to people who are non-quilters, I think, that that's one of the most interesting things is that they have this concept mm -hmm. of this is what a quilt should look like. And I'm like, oh, honey, like quilting hadn't looked like that in a long time. <laughs> you know, I, so I like that. Um, I like the deadlines. Um, and on some of the quilt shows, not all the quilt shows, you get feedback. So judges actually look at your quilt. Now, I'll say when you're judging, I, you spend two minutes with a quilt if that long. And so you're not getting a whole lot of time to look at every individual quilt. So a lot of the feedback's very limited, which is sad in, if you're entering shows. But just to give you, you know, to set your own expectation, you're going to get a very a limited amount of information from the feedback. So don't have the expectation of they're going to look at, you know, things in depth and give you uh, uh, unbelievable amounts of feedback. That's not going to get from feedback from a quilt show. But I will say, like, the judging comments, for a good judge, it's not like, girl, you should just pack it in now and do not <laughs> no. make yeah. any more quilts. It's never that. It's like, hey, good use of color. There's always at least one positive thing. Like, right. oh, I love your use of color or great technique with the quilting. Design. And or, then, yeah. you know, one or two things that, you know, hey, focus more on getting your binding full or... Points matching yeah. or... Yeah, I and mean, it's, it's. I have never been surprised by judges' feedback. Like, oh, I hope they don't notice this. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and and that's the. I mean, I think that's the thing too, because I've judged a couple of quilt shows, and I think that that as a judge, your perspective changes. Of, I've only got two minutes to look at this. I need to highlight what stands out to me as the best thing about this quilt, and I need to highlight what stands out to me as what they could work on. Um, that would make it a better quilt. And some of those comments are, you know, easily, you know, obtained in that this is outstanding color. Okay, well, that color all works together. Or, you know, you've got some tension issues. So, you know, judges are going to see that kind of thing. Um, I know when I was appraising a quilt um, <laughs> during my testing, I told them that they had some tension issues and the owner was right there and it was during my test and I thought it was not going to get passed, but they passed me. Because it was true. I mean, you were yeah. highlighting what was true about it. I will so. say, too, for anyone that's apprehensive about entering a show, like start with a small local show because the one yes, that I agree. the large guild that we belong to runs, it's a community show. And so there is a range of skills. There are people that have won at Houston that enter and then there are, you know, Everyday quilters, like, hey, I made quilts for my granddaughter, and I would just like it to hang, so yes. we can go see it together. And honestly, one of the best, one of the best categories that got hung at the show was the young person's quilt and uh, category, where you had these, you know, eight-year-olds that had made their first quilt, and they're, you know, twenty-four by twenty-four, and she got a ribbon because everybody get. They get participation ribbons in the young quilters. And she was so excited. She told her grandmother to guard her ribbon at the show. <laughs> she said, she said, Grandmommy, 
they're not going to take my ribbon. You've got to make sure it's still here because she was very, you know, it was important to her that she got a ribbon. <laughs> and she came to the award ceremony, and I actually got to give her the ribbon, and she was very excited. It was neat. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, I think feedback's important because um, you know what's wrong with your quilt. And honestly, sometimes judges don't get it. I mean, I was in a judging room, and the judges looked at a good friend of mine's quilt and said, oh, this embroidery is machine embroidery. I knew, because that was a friend of mine, every bit of it was hand. It's just like, uh, and it was, you couldn't say to the judge, oh, by the way, that's all hand. You totally missed it. You know, you had to let them judge. Yeah. And yeah, so we're all human. We're not going to see everything. So you can fool the judges too. So I know. That's a goal. There you go. Fool well, judges. Well, <laughs> We already talked about the Pigma pins. I mean, I mean that's full judges because they didn't notice that muck quilt. Yeah, they didn't point that out on the one that I had in the show. Yeah. Last year. <laughs> it's like, ooh, the bobbin thread showed up. Let's just take a little. I'm not saying that happened, but it, I'm saying it happened. <laughs> it did happen. happened on my quilt. <laughs> so, oh, and here's one other thing, and we'll link to this. But Lyric Kennard, um, who's an art quilter in the in uh, North Carolina. She puts out an email with all of the shows that you can enter and the deadlines and links to them. And so emails come out from her, and they have all these links for national and regional shows. And it's a great place to just start, hey, ooh, I think I want to enter a show. So that, cool. and then you can get other information from AQS. All their shows are online, and they have a chart with deadlines of this is when you enter for this show and this is when you mm -hmm. enter for that show. Um, so do that and, and don't be upset. Like I just entered a national show and I got a quilt rejected and you know what? It's okay. It, I lived and oh, yeah. it's going to be okay. Now the good news is thousands of quilts got entered in that show and apparently their definition of, uh, negative space and my definition of negative space is two different things because that's a category I entered and, and pay attention to that too when you enter a show. What are the category requirements and what, you know, how big is it? Because there's category requirements for that. Um, and what techniques are used in it. Definitely read all of that yeah. so that you're entering it in the right category. Because I know in the show that I've been really close to and a part of, we've had to go, hmm, this doesn't fit this category. And we move it or, yeah. and that, and shows will do that. So, but it help them out. Yeah. <laughs> so, so. To me, the worst part about entering a show, it's not actually finishing the quilt. Really? It's putting the stupid sleeve on the back. <laughs> oh. I hate hanging sleeves. <laughs> hate. I don't mind hanging sleeves. To me, I'm like, I, I finished the quilt. Now I got to go put a stupid sleeve on the back? I just leave them on. Like all my quilts upstairs have hanging but, sleeves. So on. I, the way I hang quilts in my house, I don't need sleeves for them. I have kind of a curtain rod that I've painted to match my wall, so it blends in, and then I have loops of fabric with uh, like suspender clips, and so I just clip the quilt up to hang in my house. So I don't need a hanging sleeve on them. Oh, I just hang my own sleeves on yeah, all my no. quilt. So what what I do because I hate making sleeves. Um, Whenever we have a sheet wear out or something, and then it's it's you have this remaining sheet that's lost its mate, is that I cut up that remainder sheet into eight and a half inch big right. old strips, and I just make tubes of sleeves, and then I could just whack off a hunk whenever I need one. So there at least go. I still have to stitch it down or safety pin it if I want to go redneck engineer. <laughs> <laughs> I just put them on. I, I guess that's not a big deal for me. I'm surprised. <laughs> That I'm okay with that, and you're not. I, but I, I binding is my least favorite. I'm like, I already put it in the spreadsheet. It's done. Now I got to work on it some more. <laughs> it's done. Well, you don't put it in a spreadsheet that it's done until you have the hanging sleeve on it, girl. I'm just saying, it could be an option. You could just not. Again, of course, I don't have spreadsheets, so there you go. That yeah. helps. You don't have spreadsheets. That's not a tip. Get a spreadsheet. <laughs> There's some out there that watch us that I'm sure don't have spreadsheets. Oh, I'm sure they can let us know. know. They could tell us, do you have a spreadsheet or not? I don't have spreadsheets. I know how to do a spreadsheet. I've played in Excel. <laughs> anyway. All right. So that's all that we have for our show this month. <laughs> and it's brought to you by Atlanta Northwest Sewing and Machine Service. Newly certified. Yes, Hooray. newly certified. We're so uh, proud of her. So we'd like to thank 77 Peaches, Big Think Productions, Cotton Art Studios. <laughs>
and Hip to Be a Square podcast for being a part of The Stitch. Where can you find more about us? You can find links to our sites and on our show site at thestitchtvshow.com. And so don't forget, you can follow us on Twitter. You can find us on Facebook. You can find us on Instagram, all these places. If you'd enjoyed the show, please like it on YouTube. Give us a thumbs up on Google+. Plus, Instagram. Instagram, Facebook, all Twitter. those different places yes. where you can find us at The Stitch. And TV. share, share, share. Share it with your friends. Yes, please. We need to come up with badges to put. Yes. Oh, that'll be a good idea. Oh, yeah. So our next virtual sew-in is going to be Friday, February 12th, 7 p.m. U.S. Eastern. We had quite the crowd this month. It was there. great fun. Oh, it yeah. was fun. Uh, so that'll be broadcast on our channel here on YouTube and on the thestitchtvshow.com. My podcast, Hip to Be a Square, comes out every week and will now include the audio version of the show in the right. feed. It's very exciting. And you can email us with any questions or comments at info at the stitch TV show dot com. That's I feel all. Like, I feel like that's it. All those things and more can be found on our website. Guess where? The, the stitch TV show dot com. So we'll see you next time and uh, keep on quilting and tune in next month for more quilting chat with friends. <laughs>